All right, here we go. Hey, everyone. This is Foundations of Math 10. We're going to be doing 1.7 today. I think this is the last section in the chapter. And this involves solving problems involving objects. And uh, the types of objects that we're going to be studying today are going to be composite objects. That is, they are objects that are a combination of more than one kind of shape or one, more than one kind of polygon or object kind of stuck together. So uh, in your textbook, you'll see a picture of these grain bins. And of course, uh, we live in, a, in the heartland of Canada here in Saskatchewan, and there's a lot of grain bins out in the, uh, in the fields. And, of course, this is where farmers put the grain that they bring in from the fields. Uh, they store it in there before they can take it to the elevator and sell it. And I grew up on the farm, and I remember um, uh, harvest time this time of year, and it was pretty exciting. There's a lot of long days, and it was good to see all the work from the year kind of come, come to fruition here. So we would, what would happen was, you see, maybe in the background here, I'm not sure what that is, if that's an auger or not, but something called an auger is, uh, it takes the grain when you dump it from the truck into the auger, it pumps it up to the very top here, and then it drops it in the, the top. So we have this, we have this auger, uh, there's, a, there's a motor and there's, you know, wheels and whatever, okay? And then you, you dump the grain into a big hopper that's here and it goes up into the auger and then it deposits in the bin. Now, what happens is the grain falls in here, right? And it starts to make a little pile on the floor like this a little pile and then as it grows what happens is it starts to grow and there's a pile it, it, it forms a cone right a three-dimensional cone and so as this pile gets bigger it it forms this larger and larger cone and you know the grain pumps in here and it falls to the side and so that's why grain bins are made this way is because as the grain gets pumped in these are bad lines sorry but it's just a larger and larger sort of cone shape on the top but then once it hits the edge there's a cylinder on the bottom you see and so as this rises the cone rises the te the, the, the the heap rises and then it this is kind of the most efficient shape for a grain bin because when it's all full like this then you know that's there's no empty space there's no space that's wasted so this is the uh, shape of a grain bin but if you look closely what you'll see is that on top we have a cone right and on the bottom we have a cylinder so in this section, we are going to be finding volume, okay? And we're gonna be finding area or surface area too. So um, we know how to find the volume of all sorts of different shapes and the surface area of all sorts of different shapes. Now we're just gonna combine it together. It's really, there's really nothing new, but some of these problems maybe look a little tricky because uh, you gotta kind of pick out the shapes that are involved. So I'm gonna erase some of this here now. And we are actually going to solve this problem, which says this is kind of our intro problem. Here's a sketch of a grain bin. The farmer's grain truck, okay, the truck that brings the grain to the bin, can hold 550 cubic feet of barley. So that's 550 feet cubed, right? cubic feet. That's per one truckload. So how many truckloads will fill this bin? So we need to find out how many cubic feet of material can fit inside this. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and tackle this. So I've got my uh, details over here and we've got, uh, let's do the cylinder first, okay? So we're going to have volume one plus volume two equals volume total. The volume one is going to be the cylinder, right? The cylinder. Volume two will make the cone Okay, so let's do volume one. Let's make this red. Volume one. Now it's a good idea to write the formulas out, uh, you know, just so you remember them, so you use them properly. Uh, so volume one formula for the cylinder is what? It's going to be pi r squared, that's the area of the circle on the bottom, times the height. So pi r squared h, right? Okay, so uh, pi is just a regular old number. We're gonna use our calculator function for that one. And r, now do we have r? Mm, we're given the diameter, it looks like, of the bin. And so r is going to be half of the diameter, right? So it's gonna be 10 feet, half of 20. And then the height is given as 19 feet here, okay, 19 feet. So volume one equals pi times 10 squared, and you can put the squared inside the brackets there if you want, doesn't really matter, we're, we're just squaring the 10, and then times 19. So pi times, it's gonna be 100 times 19. So let's get our calculator out here, there we go. And let's turn that on, whoops, hello, where's on? Ah clear and let's do so pi is our pi button make sure you use your pi button don't use 3.14 it's not precise enough okay use your pi button if you don't have a pi button use 3.14159 that's enough decimals okay but we'll do pi 
and we'll go times 100, because that's what 10 squared is, and times 19. Okay, that's 5969.026. So that's volume one, 5969. 5969.0. Uh, now we'll, we'll want to keep some decimal places here, okay? We'll round at the very end. We'll round at the end, but we'll, let's let's be as exact, as precise as possible. Okay, so that's going to be cubic feet, okay? So feet cubed. And that's what's going to fit inside the, the cylinder when it's all full. That's what's going to be totally in there. Now we need to focus on this little cone up here. Okay, so let's see. Um, volume for cone, let's make that blue, okay? Volume two is the cone one. And if you remember, let's see the volume, uh, it's the same as a cylinder, except um, instead of pi r squared h, we have to then divide that by, do you remember? Three, okay, divide by three. It's one third of what the regular cylinder height would be. So it's going to be pi r squared h divided by three, or one third times pi r squared h. Cool. Okay, so volume two then is going to be pi times, we said the R was 10, so that's 10 squared, and the H, now don't use 19 because that's for the cylinder, the H is here, it's five feet, you see that? So this is gonna be five, and I'm gonna divide that by three. Okay, so volume two, let's do that on the calculator here. All right, so what is that? That's gonna be pi times 100 times five and then divided by three and you can do all that at once there so 523.598 523.598 cubic feet and that should be the second part so if we go back to volume total we're going to add those two together the cylinder and the cone and assuming that it's completely jam-packed full right so we'll add them both together so the volume total is going to be let's just do that on the calculator it's V1 plus V2, which is going to be this number plus the 5969.026 uh, number. Cool. Which is 6492.62. 6492.62. All right. Now, what we're going to do there, that's the total volume. And remember, the question said how many truckloads are required. Well, each truckload is this many cubic feet. That's per truck. So we are gonna take this total cubic feet here and we're gonna divide by each truck load, right? To get the number of trucks. So let's do that. On our calculator, we'll just use the same number, decimals and all, and we'll divide by 550, okay? That's, again, that's the volume per truck. So if 550, you have to fill the truck 11.8 times. So how many truck loads are required to fill the bin? You can just say 11.8 um, truck loads. Now, how many trips would you have to make to fill the bin? If that was the, the question, you'd have to think about that just maybe a little differently. And you would say, I would have to make 12 trips. You'd round that up because a 0.8 of a truckload, if you didn't make that last trip, you wouldn't fill it. So you'd have to make 12 trips, but it's 11.8 truckloads. Okay, we good with that? I think you did all that correctly now. So if we make sure we got all our calculations correct and everything like that. Okay, all right, well, let's continue on. Let's do um, another example here. So again, we're doing volume again. We're doing two pieces here. So I'll, I'll just read this question. It says, determine the volume of this composite object to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter. Now, there's two pieces here. There's a cylinder on the bottom, as you can tell, and there's a hemisphere on top. So a hemisphere's volume is one half of a sphere's volume. Okay, now I'm going to suggest that you take a minute and try and do this yourself. Okay, try and do this yourself. If you're watching the video right now, pause the video and uh, take a minute and try and get this volume yourself and we'll see how well you did. We'll compare your answer and my answer in a minute. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to give that a try here. And let's, uh, let's say that this is going to be volume one down here and the top part, the hemisphere is going to be volume two. So the volume total is of course going to be volume one plus volume two. Cool. Uh, let's focus on volume one. That's going to be the cylinder, right? So again, it's going to be pi times r squared times h. So volume one is going to be pi times, what's the radius? 18. That's going to be squared. And the height is 32. Okay, there's going to be some big numbers here. No problem. So volume one is going to be, let's do that on our calculator, uh, pi times now if you don't know what 18 squared it is in your head no problem just do 18 and then the squared do that all inside the brackets there and then times 32 okay three 
that was 032, 0326. Okay, we'll keep all the decimal places and then let's do the second one. So I'll do a different color here. Volume two is going to be now. Remember what the formula for a full sphere is? It was four thirds pi r cubed, right? So we wanna do half of that. So let's multiply that by half again. Okay, you see that? So we're gonna have this at that. Now simplified, that's gonna be four over six, right? Times pi r cubed. Okay, so um, one times four, right, is four. Two times three is six. So four over six, that's the same as two thirds. You could simplify that to two thirds if you want, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna leave it as four six, doesn't matter. So uh, let's fill everything in. Four over six times, and you could just put the six on the bottom of everything too. This might be easier to do on your calculator. R is 18 and that's gonna be cubed divided by six. So you see how this four sixth is a fraction out front multiplied by everything, but you could also put four times everything and then divide everything by six, that works too. Uh, the rules are all the same there. So on the calculator, let's do that. So we're gonna do four pi, and then we're gonna go bracket. That's If you don't put anything in between, it, it, it understands that to be a multiplication, okay? Now the power of three button, you might have to find your exponent button, which is this one for me. Okay, so I got four times pi times 18 cubed, see? And then divide by six. You can do that all at once if you want these, these ones all at once. Uh, 12 to 14, 12 to 14.51 something, okay? Double check that, 12 to 14.51, okay? All right, cool. Now, um, did we? Is that half of? Is that the hemisphere? It is because we put the half in there. So you just be careful. Make sure you got everything there. Uh, and so let's add these up. So we'll get this twelve uh, to fourteen, and we'll plus the three two five seven two point zero three two six. That should be the one that was up there, right? So three two six. We can add the three if we want. Okay. So add those all up. And we should get about 44,786.5. So that is awesome. So V, oops, what was that? It's black here. So VT is V1 plus V2 is going to be that sum, which we just did about 44786.5 cubic centimeters it is, you see? These are centimeters. So to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter, I think that's exactly what we have, right? Okay, good. All right, there you go. There's your work. There's your answer. Make sure we, we circle our answers. Did I circle my answer there? I did not. Let's make sure we do that just for good habits. Okay. Okay, we got. Hopefully that's what you got if you did pause this video and, and try that. Um, so let's move to the next one here. Uh, the next half of this is surface area. So surface area of composite objects, they get a little tricky. Now, let me tell you why. Because we have to be careful with the surfaces that are not exposed to the air. So surface area is all the areas on the very outside. What I mean by this is this, if you split this composite object into two different objects, you're going to have a pyramid, looks like a square pyramid, you see, five by five. And you're also going to have like a, uh, a cube, because that's five by five by five, okay? So if I were to draw these two, okay? And if I were to consider that I have you know, a bottom to this one, and I have a top on this one. When you're finding surface area individually, you would include the base and you would include the top, but because they're stuck together, you can't, that's not exposed to the air. It's not part of the surface. So you don't add those in, okay? So you just focus on the sides of this top part and the sides and the bottom of this one, but not the top, okay? So we have to be careful with that, that's, that's it. If you just remember that, you're good. So we're just finding the lateral area of this pyramid on top, right, not the, not the base. So the lateral area has a slant height here of four, and this, we know from the diagram, this top is the same as this bottom, which is five, okay? So I've got um, the surface area of, let's call them the triangles, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four of them, so four times, what's the surface area of the one triangle? Well, that's the formula for surface area of a triangle is one half base times height, right? Or base times height times two. So base is five, height is four, 
and then divide it by two. So you can multiply by half or divide everything by two. So I've got four triangles, one half base times height. You see that? And you can do that all at once. And uh, hopefully that's not too confusing for you. The other thing you could do is you could go, I've got four triangles and I've got one half the base times the height. You could write it like that as well if that makes sense to you. But that's kind of what this is. So let's see, can we do this in our head? Oh, geez, I, might, I think we might be able to. So uh, four divided by two is just two. So two times, what's five times four? That's 20. So two times 20 is 40. What do you think? Does that look easy enough? That's 40 meters squared, okay? All right, so that's the surface area of the triangles. Now notice I did not include the base on the bottom because it's covered up, right on. Okay, surface area of these, well, those are all squares, I guess, aren't they? There's one on this front, there's two on the side, three on the other side, there's four on the back side, and there's five on the bottom. So guess what, we're gonna do five times, what's the area of each triangle? Five times five, right? So not six sides, because we're not counting the top here but it's all the sides the four sides and the bottom so five times five times five that's five cubed that's 25 times five is 125 125 meters squared so the surface area of this looks to be so surface area total total is going to be 40 plus 125 is 165 meters squared 165 meters squared okay so remember if you have two things stuck together right so I have this I have this book here my big Bible and I have this pad like this you see now this is we're gonna do another one that's similar to this because there's a smaller one on top okay so you want to take the surface area of all the sides and everything and then the surface area of this one but look at when we stick them together the bottom side of this is not counted anymore, can't count it. And also, there is a part of the top here that has to be subtracted too that you counted when you counted them individually. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful with that when they're stuck on. And that's exactly what we're gonna do uh, next here. Okay, it's exactly what we're gonna do next. So let's scroll down here. Oh, beauty, look at this. All right, this is awesome. Okay, now I think this is the last one that we had, last example, okay? Super good. Last example. All right, surface area. Now, volume is easy. Volume of the rectangular prism, the square prism here, plus the volume of the cylinder, done. Easy. Surface area. So this is where we have to be careful, okay? I am not going to count this, this spot here because it's all covered up, you see? So uh, let's, let's focus on the, um, oops, it's surface area, not volume. Let's focus on surface area one first of the cylinder, okay? Now a net diagram, haven't drawn a net diagram for a while. Well, there's the top, and guess what? There is the wraparound part. That's all we're gonna consider, the top and the side, not the bottom. So this is surface area one is going to be pi r squared for this circle, check, plus, mm, what's the wraparound part again? Ooh, this top side is the circumference of the circle because it wraps all the way around. So what's the circumference? 2 pi r times the height of the um, cylinder, 2 pi r h. Okay, so that's the surface area of a cylinder, remember. Okay, so SA1. So pi times, do we have, uh, oh yeah, 1. Pi times 1 squared plus 2 times pi times, well, still 1. Height is 4. Okay, I hope I'm not going too fast there for you, but this is the surface area of this one. So this is pi plus 8 pi. Hmm, that's cool. That's actually 9 pi. If I have 1 pi plus 8 more pi's, I have 9 pi's. Uh, I think it's a good idea to do a decimal, right? Uh, when you get older, calculus, okay, you're going to leave your answer like this, 9 pi, because that's more exact. That's more exact, so we're going to leave it like that, but we don't have to do that today. 9 times pi, or just 9 pi, and hit equals 28.27. So surface area 1 is 28.27. Okay, we good with that? Okay, so that's got that's got the cylinder part. Now, for the other one, um, let's do this in different color. So the surface area two, right? This is surface area two here. It's a it's a it's a box. Okay, the base is five by five. So there's going to be a bottom five by five, right? So let's go um, area of the base plus 
And you know what? All of these, these are five inches by one inches. There's one, two, three, four of them. Uh, so four of the area of the sides, right? So four of the area of the sides, which, eh, you know what? I'm just gonna put the numbers in. Can I just put the numbers in? I don't wanna do a, a formula right now. So five times five, so five squared is the bottom, plus four times five times one. Okay, again, that's four sides that are, that are, that are one inch by five inches, okay? And here's where you gotta be careful. We need to add the top of this, I'll do this in blue, the top of this, but not the whole top. It's gonna be the whole, the whole five by five minus, minus this right here. You see, minus the circle that's covering it. So I'm gonna go five times five, but I have to subtract the area of the circle, which is right here, here, and right here. So minus pi, okay? Now let that sink in for a, for a minute. Let that sink in for just a minute. So I've got the area of the bottom part, five squared. There's nothing covering the bottom part. It's gonna, we're gonna count that. I've got four sides of five by one, okay? And then I've got my top, which is five by five, except I need to subtract the circular, circular area that is covered up by the cylinder, which is, turns out to be pi r squared or pi times one squared or one pi, okay? Hopefully that's a making a sense to you. It's a making a sense to you. If you were in Italy right now, you'd be eating your pasta and it'd be making a sense to you. This is spicy meatball. <clears throat> Don't ask me why I just did that. All right, uh, clear, because I'm going crazy. Five squared is 25, we know that. We can do some of this in our head, right? Four times five times one, that's 20 times one. So plus 25 minus pi, we we'll get all of our Get all of our symbols right there, and that's going to be 66.858, 66.858. And then we're going to add on to that, this one plus this one. So 28.27 should be about, oh, plus 66.858 should be 95.12. That looks pretty close, and if we round to the nearest square inch, which I believe the, the textbook is looking for there, this is actually one of your homework questions, uh, we have 95 square inches. Awesome, okay? So be careful with your um, surface area when you have objects stuck onto other objects. You gotta be careful you don't count. Um, yeah, make sure you don't count uh, too much there. It's, if something's being covered up, you gotta subtract that sort of area. Okay. All right, so here's your assignment for 1.7. Please get a start on that. Uh, you do have a test coming up. Well, you'll have a quiz coming up probably on this uh, very shortly, and then a test coming up probably within a few days, you know, because this is the last section of the chapter. There you go. See you later.